President Obama makes an historic three-day trip to Cuba, landing in the island nation yesterday, but not without controversy. Just hours before the president landed Sunday, Cuban authorities arrested more than 50 protesters. They were marching to demand better human rights. Critics also calling out Cuban leader Raul Castro for not greeting the president upon his arrival. My next guest says he's also disappointed, but for other reasons. He's Dr. Manny Alvarez. He's Fox News senior managing health editor. He was born and raised in Cuba before moving to the United States. And Dr. Manny, it's good to see you. How are you? Good Thanks morning. Thanks so much for joining us. I want to, we want to hear about your story when you immigrated here. But first, why are you disappointed? Well, I'm disappointed because, uh, you know, this is a historical moment. Uh, you know, and I was all for changing the embargo rule because I think after 50 years it has not worked. However, I think, just like Trump said, you know, if Trump was president, he would have made that deal. I wouldn't have made that deal either uh, uh, because Cuba's getting everything and we're not getting nothing in return. Uh, human rights, you know, you saw that story, the, the 50 ladies that got arrested, they say, you know, you see the story, they got pictures taken, 50 people, that happens in Cuba every day. That has happened to Q in Cuba for the last, you know, 40 years. And it's all over the, you know, all over the country, you know. Uh, uh, the, the Cuban society, even to, to the, today, gets monitored constantly. And I would argue even the Cubans uh, government uh, keeps a tab on all the Cuban Americans that are here. They know what I do or or where I'm, you know, the things that I'm saying. Wow. So it's a, still a society that is quite uh, uh, controlled by the government. And the whole intention of this whole thing is to make Cuba a Chinese model. That's all it is. I mean, more, no more and no, no less. But what does that mean? I mean, what, what is the point? Doug, hi, your, your thoughts on this as well, because if we're not getting anything out of this and, and the human rights uh, remain uh, or lack of remain the way it has been for so long, what, what are we doing there? Well, we're, we're there for a Barack Obama legacy play. Right. Barack Obama, when he is no longer president, can say, I'm the one who opened Cuba. So you can go to the Floridita and have your Hemingway daiquiri, or you but can go to the Hotel But that's he didn't house, open Cuba. I mean, that, well, you know, look. Not for just, Cubans, no. But right, not, not for play. Cubans. Just like it's being said, this is something that the president wanted to get, uh, you know, in the bucket list. I was the first president in 88 years to, to get there, and he got it. Uh, that's all that really uh, he, he, he has done, you know, but nothing for the Cuban people. Wow. Now, do you think a lot of the business deals that are happening and kind of opening up the transportation can lead to real change and ha actually open up the economy down there and make it more capitalistic and help small businesses? Do you think that can actually well, take effect? Look, a lot of the people that went on that trip, I know them all, uh, and I know them very well, and I know that for the last year and a half, a lot of Cuban Americans in big business have been going down to the islands in their private jets, having private meetings. Um, and they're still trying to get their hands around uh, how to make the deal. Now, most of these people are westernized. They know about buying equity, investing money, getting the returns on their money. That's not the model that Cuba is ready to do. So they, this, is, this whole thing is to try to, okay, just like the Starwood deal, run the hotels, you don't own the land, you don't own the hotels, we'll split some of the revenues, and that's as good as it gets. Uh, a lot of business, men, the business people need uh, the hand-holding of Obama, and that's exactly what they're going to do. But yeah. so far as a straightforward investment and economic, you know, me going over there and say, you know what, I'm going to open a hardware store tomorrow. Can I do that? I'm Cuban. I can't do that yet. And, but, and also in terms of what we didn't get, what about the 70, roughly 70 fugitives from justice here in the United States who are in Cuba? Joanne Chazamard, convicted cop killer. Are they bringing her back to the no. United States? No, uh, no, no. Well, well, no. But then, again, like if people are disgusted by this deal, that's one of the very reasons. You're right. You're right. Now you got you came here at what age? Oh, Man, I came you, here. You, around I know you have photos of you growing oh, up my God. as a this child in morning. Cuba. People Tell are us having breakfast. as we look at some of these photos <laughs> uh, about your story. Well, you know, look, I left Cuba when I was about 12 years old. Uh, I came through a program called the Peter Pan program, and at that time, uh, uh, the Catholic Church would help some of uh, the, the Cuban citizens give up. Up their sons and daughters to the Catholic Church so that they would be they'd be put in foster care. Look how cute I wow, really. you are really look, cute. look at all the hair I used to have. <laughs> then the oh, stress of medicine killed me. And and growing up in Cuba, <laughs> what was it like? Tell us what was Well look, you know, it, it was a simple life in the sense, you know, my father was a businessman. We had food on the table, we had a roof over our heads, you know, we had a good Catholic upbringing. That's you know, it was you know, Cuba and then you were Catholic. reunited with him, right? Well I was I was I was put in foster care when I got to this country for many 
many years, and ultimately my father. As part after, of the Peter Pan program. As part of the Peter Pan program, and then uh, and then uh, my father ended up in labor camp for four years, uh, and he had to do that uh, forced labor camp, uh, and then we were reunited four or five years afterwards. So uh, you know, it, and this is a, you know this so is the story of So he was put in the labor millions. camp because you you you. Well, he was put in the labor camp because of pol his political ideology to a certain degree. You know that, that's you know a, 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 in those years uh, it was very it was like North Korea. It was very harsh. You made a mistake. You said the wrong thing. You get caught. You know if you get caught with a with a pound of beef because somebody gave it to you and you couldn't explain it, automatically you know you went to jail. Uh, and so it's a very harsh society back in the day. Nowadays things have changed, but still the joke is that you know the biggest thing that the Cuban Revolution or the biggest failure of the Cuban Revolution is that there's no breakfast, no lunch, no dinner. You know that's basically what what you're dealing with. What, what do you think about how Raul Castro didn't even visit uh, President Barack Obama when he landed? Is that a way for him to signal his strength over the Cuban people? It amazes me. Two things about that. Yesterday I wrote it uh, when he was arriving. Uh, the whole trip was not really well informed for the Cuban people. You know, nobody, you know, it's not like they rallied after, uh, you know, hey, the president's going to be in this avenue. Let's everybody go out there. Welcome, you know, welcome, Mr. President. Even you had white flags, you know, saying, okay, peace is here to stay. None of that. And the fact that the president of Cuba did not go to see the president of the United States, come on. Uh, this tells you the whole story. Yeah, it tells what's you. that all about? Well, it tells you the whole story. You know, these people are living in a different planetary system, and that's not going to change uh, for a long, long time. So, mm. Dr. So. Manny, thank you for sharing You're your welcome. story. Really great to talk We're with you. We're lucky to live in your orbit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Take a short